hear me in the back? Can you just wave your hand if you can hear me? Okay, thank you. So again, welcome to all of you for sending this program. And thank you, Prabhuji, for very kind words. So we'll start with chanting Radha Madhava, which is our tradition, and then we'll start with this process. Gopesh Gopika Kantra Dhaka Namastupe 
तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदा महेश्वरी विश्वान देवी प्रणमा वाछा कल्प तरुभ्य कृपा सन्दुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गणाध श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So as uh, Prabhu Ji announced that we are having, continuing to have many Rath Yatras in different cities. Actually there are now almost 11 temples in the greater Toronto area and almost all of them are having their Rath Yatras. So every week there is somewhere, happening somewhere. And so without that uh, we will talk a little bit more about Lord Jagannath who is uh, Yatra or travel. We celebrate this Rath Yatra festival. And uh, I want to take a different route. The route was as we know that in the age of Kali, which is the present age, the process for attaining the love of Krishna is what? Anybody? What's the process for this age? Chanting. Chanting. Thank you. Chanting. Which is easy, isn't it? Chanting is easy. Yes, no? Very people say so. Very, yes. Not everybody is convinced. Because that's the point that there are not many people who chant even though such an easy process. So Lord Krishna said, you know what, let's give, me, give them something even simpler. So he said, you come to Vrindavan and roll the dust of Vrindavan and you come to me. Some people say, well, too far, you know, airplane fare so high, this and that, can't go. So, okay, fine. Come to Maya. All you have to do is take a dip in the Ganges and you come to me. Well, same, too far. So Lord Jagannath, he was Krishna himself, but much, much more merciful than this form of Krishna that we see in the center of the uh, altar. And uh, so he said, I'll give you something even more simple. Something that you cannot say no to. And he said, I'll even say that when people like me talk, other people go to sleep. But this is one activity where nobody goes to sleep. And what is that? Honoring Krishna. So he said, you honor my prasadam, you come to me. So very simple. Everybody loves prasadam, right? Am I right to assume that? Yeah. So he said, just come. So therefore, he got a name called Ananda Brahma. Ananda means queens. And Brahma is the spiritual entity, which is the Lord himself. So he has two names in that category. Daru Brahma. Daru is wood. So wooden deity is the name wood. And uh, Ananda Brahma, which is that he loves prasadam or giving prasadam. So we're going to focus today on the prasad of Jagannath Puri and what happens there. So the certain things that are offered to Lord Jagannath every, every time. Now, can anybody guess how many times a day Aptapu Jagannath Puri is the bhoga offered to Lord Jagannath in Jagannath Puri? Just eight? 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 Okay. Anybody else? A okay, higher number maybe? Huh? 40? 48? 40. 40. I'm sorry, 14. Higher. Every? Even higher. 56 times a day, every day. The chapter holds variety. This is 56 times. So, 56 times a day. And the reason is that many, many years ago, like many years ago, he gave a benediction to him who was responsible for actually manifesting this form. His name was King Indra Dhyumna. And he asked for a benediction. He said, my Lord, I want that as soon as you finish enjoying your bhoga and you wash your hands, you cleanse your mouth, before it has dried, we want to offer you again. So he said, okay. So that's what happens. So imagine, 56 times means probably every uh, 
25 minutes? It's off. So let's say 15 minutes takes to make one offering. That means she has 10 minutes to make an offering. She washes her hands, kisses her mouth, first dry, another offering. And one of the reasons he's doing that, besides the benediction he gave, is that he wants everybody to enjoy his prashad for uh, where, where they are in uh, in Jagannath uh, Puri or anywhere else in the world. So with that, the two things, actually three things, are always offered with every prashad. One is Kishri. Everybody knows what Kishri is? Okay. So there is a reason for that. There was a devotee. Her name was, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. her name was Karmala. She was a little older, but she would make Kishri great love in her heart. But she was not allowed to go inside the temple and offer what she cooks. With a very strict voice, we'll talk about that in a minute. So she would offer it in her home. But she was doing it with so much love that Lord Jagannath would take the form of a small boy and show up at her house every morning after she was finished cooking. She'll make him sit on the lap and she'll feed him with her hands. And then he'll go back. One time there was a sadhu, a sage, uh, visiting her house. And he saw the whole thing. And he was a very elevated devotee. So he knew right away, this boy is none other than Lord Jagannath. So after he, Lord Jagannath left, he chastised Karma Bhai. And he said, what are you doing? She said, what do you mean, what am I doing? He said, you're not offering any mantras, you're not taking your bath before you do that, you know, it's, everything's so dirty here, and you make him sit on your lap, he's feeling with your hands, you don't even wash your hands. And she said, so she got nervous, you know, this elevated devotee is chastising her. She said, my Lord, my, my sir, uh, my dear sir, what should I do? And he said, from now on, every morning you take a shower, clean the place, the kitchen area, wash utensils properly, and when he comes off my seat, for some mantras, and then you let him have a shower. She said, okay, you know, simple lady. So the next morning, she went to the shower and started cleaning it, and Lord Jagannath showed up on time. And he said, Maya, where is my kitchen? I said, you have to wait, I'm cleaning up and I'm getting ready and all that. So they took an extra hour. And so finally she was ready, she fed him, she tried to do some mantras and all that. She fed him, but now it was late. Because there's Arti and Bhogata over back in the temple. So he left halfway, he ran back to the altar, as to that altar. The Pujaris came and there's this Krishna all over his mouth. And they say, What happened? Who offered the Krishna? You know, so they start inquiring, and finally somebody said, This is Karma Bhai, he's been doing that. So they said, Okay, we have to figure it out, we'll go to the king and figure out what to do. In the meantime, the Lord appeared in the dream of the sadhu at night and he started chastising him. He said, what are you doing? Don't you know anything? You know, I was enjoying the khichri by karma by so much. Now you want mudras and tantras and this and that. And all this. I don't enjoy this anymore. So you go back and tell her it's okay to go back the way she was. So he went back and told her, I'm very sorry, but God says it's okay. He said, oh, that's wonderful. Then he goes to the pujaris in the temple. This was going on, so it's okay, fine. From now on, we'll take the kitchen that she makes, we'll offer to the Lord, and after she left her body, they said, every day is still going to be offered. So that's the reason why kitchen is always offered. Then there was another devotee, a male devotee. His business was to make pan. Does everybody know what pan is? Yes. Hey, yeah, okay. So he's in his shop, he'll make pan. And in his heart, he used to offer two pans to Lord Jagannath and Lord Bhagavad. So Lord said, no, 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 this, this remote thing doesn't work for us. We need it in person. So at night, they'll show up at his house. There's two little boys, again, and they'll say, can you give us some fun? So this beautiful boys, you know, he doesn't know that Lord, beautiful boys, he's so attracted to them. So yeah, sure, we need one and then three. There was another devotee, his name was Balaram Das, very elevated devotee also. So elevated, he could see the Lord coming out of the doors. And then going there, and she said, what's this going on? Every night, midnight, they leave the temple, they go to this person's house, and then they come back. So he got curious, he said, I have to go and find out. So he goes to the house of this person, and he said, did the two boys just came here? He said, yeah, and they come every night. 
So yeah, I've noticed that. What do they do? They do nothing. They ask for punch and give them punch and then they leave. So this devotee says, Bananda says, but you ask them for any money. And I said, money? I know, it never even occurred to me. They said, nice cute boy. So I just give it to them. And he said, no, 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 this way you go bankrupt. You have to ask for money. So he said, okay. So these devotees are very simple hearted. They, they don't. So next night, the Lord Balram and Lord, Bal Bal uh, Lord Jagannath, they came over. Of course, he gave one. As they started leaving, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was told I should ask you for some money. So can you give me some money for the plan? And they said, we don't have any money. We don't walk with money. We're not used to anybody asking for money when they offer us both. So he said, well, no, I've been told to ask you for money. So they said, well, we don't have it. So tomorrow when we come, we'll bring the money. I said, no, 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 no. I've heard that you're very tricky. So tell you what, you leave your chadar, you know, come chadar with us, with me, and you come back tomorrow, give me money, and you take the chadar. I said, okay. So they gave the chadar. You know, and they walked around without chadar. Next morning again, Mangal Arti time, the pujaris come, they open the door, the Lord is no chadar. So they said, somebody stole it. Somebody stole it, and it's not. It's a big thing, right? Any item stolen from Lord Jagannath's deity is a big item. So everybody in the city is looking what's going on. The king hears about this. He says, yeah, fine. In the meantime, but Ram Das was the devotee witnessing the whole thing. He went to do that. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. So he goes to and tells them what has been going on. And he said, I know where the chadar is. So the king is informed, so everybody now shows up at this person's house. You can imagine how scared he must be. The king is coming, the soldiers are coming, other people are coming. Anyway, so he, he opens the door, he folds his hand and says, Welcome, my dear king, you know, please come in. As soon as the king walks in, he sees the two chadars on the bed. He says, Oh, yeah, they are the chadars. So then he tells the whole story about what's going on. So he says, Ah, okay. Clearly, the lords want one. So from now on, every day, one will be one. So since then, every day, with every bhoga, every meal, pan is offered to the Lord. So that's how the traditions develop. Then this third one, that's not every day because it depends on season, and it's the kataha. They go to jackfruit. So what happened was there was another devotee. His name was Dagu, Dagu Das. So actually he was a devotee of Lord Ram. And so he said, Lord Jagannath, who are they? Are they not Lord Ram? So I'm not going to go. Somebody said, no, no, please come. You know, they're not the same, they're not different. You know, just go. So he said, okay. He goes there and he sees on the altar, not Jagannath, not Baldev, not Subhadra. This is Ram Lakshmana. That convinced him that they're not different. Lord Jagannath is Lord Ram, Ram is Lord Ram is Lord Jagannath. So he started serving them and again very nicely. So nicely that the Lord will again come to his house as a little boy and play games with him. Every day the Lord will come, play with him, and then go back. One day, Lord Jagannath came to him and said, Rahu, I think we should go to the garden of the king. He's got a really nice, juicy, ripe kataha. You know, we should steal one and then make it and we eat. So Rahu Das said, My dear Lord, the king knows you, the king knows me very well. If you want kathal, all you have to say, we'll go and get hundreds of kathal, best kathal you want, no problem. The Lord said, no, 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 I want to go and steal. I said, why? I mean, you know, you can get it, you can get it as many as you want. The Lord said, the Buddha, you don't understand. The taste of something stolen is so much better than something that's offered. He said, I've had practice for a long time ago. 5,000 years ago, even I used to steal. And I remember the taste of stolen butter. So let's go. So he said, okay. So they go, they go to the garden. It's fenced and all that. So jump over the fence. And they're looking at all these trees. There are hundreds of trees on it. Now Jagannath stops at once and says, This tree looks good. And look at that cut on the top. It looks like really juicy, ripe. So go climb up. And you go there, you throw it to me, I catch it, and then we go. Now, Nagudas knew there's something not quite right with the Lord's plan, but he couldn't convince him. So he said, okay, fine, he climbs up. Said, up, 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 up. Finally, he got to the one that the Lord really wanted. He said, yeah, that's the one. Pluck it and throw it. So Nagudas plucked it and said, 
Are you ready to catch it? He says, of course, I'm very good at catching things. You know, I catch lots of things. So don't worry, you throw it, I'll catch it. The Buddha says, you're okay, you're sure? Yes, I'm sure, just, just throw it, I'll catch it. Is it okay? So he throws it, and there's no Lord. Cut on the ground, breaks into million pieces, makes a very loud sound. So the security guards come running. What happened? And they come to the garden, they look everywhere. They don't see any person, but they see this big katha broken into million pieces on the ground. So then they look up and they see the Buddha sitting there on the top of the tree, you know, looking at sheepish. So they said, My dear sir, what happened? So he told the whole story. So they said, Okay, you just stay here, we'll come back. They go to the king and tell him the whole story. So the king comes and he comes to the garden and looks up and says, Oh, my dear, he knew Ragunath, who does very well. Said, my dear Ragunath, what's going on? So he said, What can I say, my dear king, whatever you've heard is correct? He says, Please come down. So he comes down and again explains everything. He says, Okay, no problem. You go home and we'll from this on, this day on, every day we will sing 100 katas to the temple for the lost picture. So from then on he starts sending 100 katas and the tradition still continues. In the season, the katas are offered to the Lord. So that's what Lord's eating, but he's eating the love of other devotees who started this tradition. So they are no longer here, but the tradition that they have established is still continuing for the Lord remembers the taste that he had. So, it is said that in the kitchen, in the Ganapuri temple, they have enough capacity to feed 100,000 devotees every day. That's 100,000. Yeah. So then the question comes, like, what kind of a kitchen is it that can cook for 100,000 uh, people, devotees? So I'm going to describe to you what kind of kitchen it is. Has anybody been to Jagannath Puri by the temple? Oh, quite a few people, wonderful. Yes. So I hope you have seen the, the kitchen there as well. So this has 750 stoves in the kitchen. It's a huge kitchen. And there are two types of stoves. One is called Anna Chula. is stove. Anna Chula where only the rice and things with rice are cooked. And they're put in a lotus form, lotus flower form. And then there's what's called Chia Ujula, which is cooked, used for cooking lentils and other things. And they put in between, they square the shape, they put in between the two Anujulas. So this way you have 750. On each Chula, they put seven parts of whatever it is they cook, rice or any other thing. And guess which part gets cooked first? The one on the top. The one on the top, not the closest to the fire, but on the top. Nobody can explain that mystery. But that's what happens. They have 500 executive chefs cooking prasad, boga, bhagala. Those 500 chefs have 300 assistants who are not allowed to cook by them. But they allow them to come into the kitchen, and they can wash the rice and other ingredients. They can cut the you know, vegetables and whatever else needs to be cut. Uh, they can clean the place. They can light the fire in, in the virtual chunas. That's it. That's all they are allowed to do. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention. There's one fire that's always going on. It's called Vaishnava fire. It never goes off. Let's make sure it goes off. And it's from that fire that other chulas are, are started to start the cooking. Then these 300 assistants have their own assistants, 200 of them, who are not allowed to come in the kitchen. But they work from outside. So, for example, bringing water from the wells. You know, bringing ingredients that have been uh, cut or uh, ground uh, by other people, and that's their role. And each of them have only one role, and they're not allowed to do anything else. But for the whole year, the whole family is fed this job. Not only that, there are other people who have just one job. For example, there's a tribe of people whose job is to make the ropes that are used for Rath Yatra to pull the chariot. That's all they do. For the whole year, they are fed, the whole family. There's another group of people who blow poncho to indicate that the bhog is, oh sorry, bhog has been prepared. And their whole family is fed the whole year just for that one job. So and so forth. There's so many different people with just one job, but they're supported by the law. Anyway, 
So, so these people who are in the kitchen and were supporting the people in the kitchen, they are very strict discipline about them. For example, they have to be clothes that are washed on that day. They cannot be soiled. If there's any spot on them, they go back, change the clothes, and uh, shower and come back and do that stuff. So very, very, very um, strict. And then when the bhogas are prepared, then to take it to the temple, does anybody know what a yoke is? It's like a stick. At the end of it, you hang on. So they have two uh, baskets at the end of this stick, and they put the boga on both sides. They balance them on the shoulder, and they go to the Some of them are allowed to put on the shoulder, and they walk. And you can see them when they come. The funny thing is, we think only we fight. Well, sometimes the lordships fight also. It's a little fight, but they have to fight. So it used to be, many years ago, there was a temple of Radha and Krishna, known as Radha Radha Kant. That was on the way between the kitchen and the temple, where the Buddha was taken. So one day the Lord came to the dream of the head Pujari and said, move Radha Radha Kant from here. Take them somewhere else. So Pujari said, but you are the same. Lord Krishna, you are Lord Krishna, so that's Lord Krishna, so you don't understand. The Lord said, no. What's going on is that as you walk by their temple, carrying the bhoga, they eat it all. So we don't get anything, we've been hungry for days. So you move them from there so at least you can eat. So that was a transcendental fight and the, the deities were removed, taken to another temple. In the another point, another temple. So, now, then Mahapushad, after Lord, is distributed freely even outside the temple. But there is a story behind that, so check the time. Okay, we have time. The story how Mahapushad became so popular and how it became available to the general public. So what happened was, everybody knows Narad Muni? Yes, yes. Narad Muni? Yes. yes. Okay, the, the wandering monk, I guess. We have a walking monk here in Toronto. And uh, he's, one, he's wandering from planet to planet, place to place, all the time, chanting the Lord's name. So he started visiting Lord Vishnu. And you see the picture of Lord Vishnu? He's always doing only one thing, Lord Vishnu. The pictures that you see. What's he doing? Huh? What is he doing? With the pictures, all the pictures we see. He's lying down, almost sleeping. And his mother Dakshmi, his wife, what is she doing? Massaging his little that's the only picture we see of Lord Vishnu, right? I'm sure he does other things, but we think that's all he does. Anyway, so Narada Muni started showing up there. And he'd chant as he's resting. And one day he said to Mother Lakshmi, My dear mother, I want to get some prashadam from the Lord's plate. And she said, Oh, Narada, you're too late. Only yesterday my husband told me to never give his prashadam to anybody. So I'm sorry, can I give it to you? Now Narada Muni, like, sometimes can be a little baby, he started crying. He said, no mother, you got to help me, I really want this. So she said, I'm sorry, I talked to him. Well, see what he said, but I can't do it. So I went away. And she, next day she was serving Bhoga, the Lord. And he noticed that her head was bowed down. She looked kind of sad, not smiling, not talking. And he said, my dear Lakshmi, is there a problem? And she said, no, my love, it's no problem, but Narada has been here many times and is asking me to give him some of your remnants. And uh, you told me not to do so, I told him I cannot do this. And he's crying. He keeps going back, he's crying, and no, he wants it. So the Lord said, okay, you know what? I love Narada also. So next time I'm honoring, I'm enjoying my bhoga, if I look somewhere else, you take the plate off. And they give it. So still okay, yes. So they had a, they had a uh, plot. They invited Garuda, the bird carrier of the Lord. And as the Lord was enjoying his bhoga, Garuda came and started talking to the Lord. So the Lord looked at this side and the mother Lakshmi took the plate. Because he said, if you look somewhere else, you can take the plate. And Narodini came, she gave it. So you can imagine how happy he was. So very quickly he just finished it all and he was 
jumping up and down, just dancing, was going from planet to planet, different planets, all over the universe, just dancing in ecstasy. Finally, he reached Kalashpur. Who lives in Kalashpur? Lord Shiva, yes. And Lord Shiva is his younger brother, Narmu's younger brother. So he's dancing in front of him, and Lord Shiva says, My dear brother, what's making you so happy? So much ecstasy. Please tell me, you know, what's going on? So Narmu said, I got Mahamasha from the plate of Lord Vishnu. So I'm so happy I'm dancing. So Lord Shiva said, That's wonderful. Did you save anything for me? Your younger brother. He said, no, I'm so sorry. Uh, I was so happy to get it. I finished off. So Lord Shiva said, well, there must be something left. You just check. He said, no, no, no. I wash my hands, wash my mouth. It's all done. And he said, no, the priest just check. So now we check. And there was one grain of rice he stuck in his, under his long nails. So he took it out, one grain of rice, and gave to Lord Shiva, who, who honored that Pashadam, and was so interested, he started dancing. But when Lord dance, Shiva dances, what happens? What's that dance called? And uh, that's it, which means the end of the world. So now all the tensions are worried, they say, you know what's going to happen, and they're praying, and you know, and Lord Shiva's in ecstasy, he's not focusing on anything. But his wife, who's his wife? Parvati. Parvati notices my husband is very happy today, and I don't know why. So I have to find out. So she goes and taps him on the shoulder and uh, says, My dear husband, what's making you so happy? And he said, well, I got Mahapusha from Lord Vishnu. He said, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Did you have something for me? <laughs> he says, oops, no, I'm sorry. You know, Narada has finished everything. He's had one great step in this world, nail. So I took that and I ate it. And she said, how dare you? You know, what kind of a husband are you? You know, you're not even thinking about your wife when you have this, something like this. Just, I'm going to pray to Lord myself. So she goes away, starts meditating on Lord Vishnu. But he's also, she's also angry. Now, what a part of this anger everybody feels. So Lord Vishnu says, Oh, something is not right, I better show up fast. So very quickly shows up and she offers obeisances, he blesses her and said, How can I help? So she told the whole story and he says, she said, I want Mahaprasha Mah also. Say, okay, no problem. I'll, I'll give it to you. He says, no, 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 not just for me, but for my children also. Now, who are our children? Kartiki and Ganesh. So, Lord is thinking, she's talking about her two children. I said, no problem, next time I come, I come to three places. He says, no, 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 my children, everybody's my children. Every living entity in every universe is my children. So, therefore, I want Mahabhashat for everybody. So, I said, okay, the task. And that's how that Mahabhashat love distributed to everybody, everywhere. That's the story behind Mahapusha being destroyed. Okay, let's go check again time. Okay, I have a few more minutes. So, I'm going to talk about I mean, Lord takes bath, right? Believe it or not. But we see, it's called Abhishek, the bathing school. If you have been here in the Abhishek ceremony, you see we put water, milk, yogurt, all this right on the top of the deity itself. But those deities, they do not put it, they don't do that. But they are worried that very soon, if you do it every day, because here we do it once a year, we do it every day, very soon the wood, it will rot and we can't do that. So what they do is, they put a mirror in front of the Lord. And what do they do? Put water on the mirror? No, but then you can't see it. So they put it in the middle. So there's a mirror, there's the Lord, they put it in the middle. So you can see in the mirror the water is being poured. And others, like yogurt and milk and uh, honey and you know, uh, clarified butter and all this kind of thing. So that's how they start. But still, every so many years, his body needs to be changed. That's good. So there's a whole process for that. It's called Navo Kaleva. Nav means new, Kaleva means body. So it gets a new body. So I'll tell you the story about how that happens. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, after the benediction that Mother Parvati got, the Lord said, I'm so pleased with your attitude that I'll give you a place in my own temple. So therefore, now, this temple of Parvati in the Renat temple, very close to the Renat temple, I mean, inside the campus, but inside the, close to the altar, it's called Bimala. So Bimala is Mother Parvati. So she is there, but Lord Shiva is outside the temple. 
They said, no, 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 that's, it doesn't work. So, now she was outside. Anyway, so it's Mother Birula, when it's time to change the body, she instructs some pujaris that uh, now's the time to change. And the way it works is that in the month of Asar, there's a Hindi month called Asar, it's about July time, June, July time. Any time when there is two full moon in the same month, in the English is called blue moon, by the way. You know, once in a blue moon expression, it's when we have two full moons in the same month. And it's the year when Pushota March is happening, it's the excess month, it's like this year. Right? So when two full moons happening in the same month of Asar, and Pushota March, that's the year. That so it happens sometime between 12 and 19 years. Every 12 to 19 years, that month comes. That's the deities have changed. So Mother Bhimla gives that indication and says, you have to go to that place where you'll find the trees. So that could be like 100 miles away, it could be 200 miles away, it could be 500 miles away. But she gives the directions, so people are assigned to run to that place. Now what are the characteristics? How do you know which trees to climb? So the tree has to have seven branches and white skin bark. And there must be a snake hole under the roots. That's the tree and there must be a mark of mace and a plow on the tree itself. That's the tree is for Lord Balaram. Nearby there must be another tree with four branches, I'm sorry, five branches. Must be yellow in color and lotus flower on the bottom. That is for Mother Subhadra. Then there must be another tree with four branches and must have a symptom of, I'm sorry, symptom of uh, conch shell and disc, shank and chakra. And must be dark in the place of the bark. And and must be near a place where three mountains are there or three rivers are meeting. That's a kind of intersection. There's an anthill and there's a temple of Lord Shiva somewhere nearby. And then the, finally another tree with three branches and, and red in color and that's what Shudas and Chakra. So they find those trees, they cut them, they bring them in an ox cart on their back of that temple. And there's a special area there they take the trees and it's covered from all sides so nobody can see. And they have nine carpenters to carve the Lennar deity, six for uh, Balram, and the six each for also is Badra and Chakra. Uh, sorry, uh, Chakra. And they work there for 21 days. Nobody is allowed to come inside. They cannot eat, drink, or anything there. They have to go outside to do that, but they cannot leave the temple. For 21 days they work there. When they are finished, it's timed with the Yatra. So three days before the Yatra, at the middle of the night, they take the new deities to the altar and put them across from the old ones. And they pick one Brahmin, who is an old person, to do the transfer of the, the personality, the power uh, of the Lord himself from the old deity to the new deity. So he sits in the middle, he reads the mantras, and he is told that he can feel something warm landing on his hand and then leave. So he goes to that process, so Pranatikshita from one older deity to the new deity. It is also said that that Brahman will definitely leave his body within one year after success. So whoever is chosen knows that, that one year left or less than one year. But they agree because it's such a great privilege. Anyway, so once that's done, there's no good at that time. Next morning, they take the older deities and there's an area in the temple where they bury them. I've seen that area. The beauty of that area is that every time a new body, so a new deities are gone, the older ones are buried in that area. But when they open it, they dig it out to, for the new one, there's nothing left. There's no wood, there's no wood powder, nothing. The deities have disappeared completely. They put the new deities. And then, just and on the third day, so that's your, and the new deities come out, and you guys So I think, I think I'm running out of time, so I'm going to stop and see if there are any questions or any comments that we we'll quickly do with comments, and uh, then we'll go to the that is. Any questions or comments? Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you very much, Shubhanga Prabhu, for taking us.
us through various past times from Jagannath Puri. Did you all learn something new today? Yes. Yes? Thank you. Once again, let's give our round of applause. Just to request that we will